Hey guys, Ryan here. The Lightning Collection has been Power Rangers fans' guiltiest pleasure ever since Hasbro acquired the franchise. An anthology line of action figures representing any TV series, occasional comic book and crossover, whether real or imagined, the approach mapped on and mirrored successful other Hasbro action figure lines. However, it's not always been the most satisfying experience for fans, as we still have more than half a dozen teams incomplete. Is this forever or will Hasbro ever go back and finish them off? Will Playmates make comparable figures in the same scale? So many questions up in the air, but now seems like the right time to address the odds and ends of the Lightning Collection in my incomplete team countdown. Now, I could have included several teams where we're still missing a civilian head or any extra members, beyond the traditional team. I decided it was mostly semantics in the grand scheme of things and so I would base this video on which teams don't look right displayed as they are. Basically, which teams aren't getting their own video unless Hasbro pulls an 11th hour stunner. For fun, I'm going to rank them not chronologically, but in terms of how many Ranger team members are still missing. Starting with our one Ranger teams. So they started both of these as part of the 15th and final wave, so we haven't been desperately waiting on these teams like we have some of the others. Also, these two were so surprising, despite being from good series. First, RPM. We've got one member, we've got six missing team members. This was the third to get started from the Disney era and the only team where it's just a female character released. Given their reticence to release females for this series, I think it's impressive that they gambled on this. But I guess, Rose McIver. Enough said. Next up, Lightspeed Rescue. One member, five missing. Chad was even more unexpected first and last foray into the Lightspeed Rescue team. I would have liked my namesake Ryan, the first US exclusive ranger. However, I can understand that Michael Chatterantabut, apologies for the mispronunciation there, is a friend of the franchise, especially during the Hasbro era, having worked with at least the Beast Morphers actors, and I think he was even at the once and always LA premiere event, so he may have even stayed on and been more involved in Cosmic Fury in the 30th. He stayed tight with the franchise and found a way to steward the new players, which I think makes him deserving of a personalised figure. Weapons with these two are kind of what has become the modern standard, where it's the sidearm and general specialist weapons, but not signature weapons. For example, Summer is missing her zip charger, but she does include her nitro blaster in both the gun and nitro sword mode. Chad gets his rescue blaster, but not his rescue laser, which is his component of the rescue bird. Overall, two solid starts to teams never finished. And speaking of two, let's talk about our two member teams, Time Force. We've got two members and four missing. Probably the most shocking season to be so hard done by, we got Wes as soon as Wave 5 back in June 2020. It made sense, he'd been back on the show for the 21st and 25th anniversary specials. Give Wes his flowers. Yes, the suit arrow and triangle proportions did look a bit funky. The head sculpt, a little bit pale, but okay, whatever, Time Force was happening. Jen, when? Never, fortunately. While rumours would persist about a trip with Cycle Deluxe release, it ended up being Lucas with Cycle. Lucas. I think Eric would have been the bigger seller. And by the time Lucas released, it was in the new era of packaging, it had the notorious new pinless moulding, and the cycle had a cover piece which didn't attach right. Yeah, it could have been better. Also not letting them off on Lucas's suit chest pattern shape, what happened between render and production? Their accessories were not bad though, chrono blasters and translucent chrono sabers were each even coloured with their individual range of colour just a shame they never went further than this. For a fan favourite season, I expected more. At least Jen. Unfortunately, the scale is just slightly too tall when compared to the original 90s era Bandai figures, but they can borrow those original signature weapons which were missing from the Lightning Collection versions. And just the next chronological series is also a two member team, Wild Force. Two members, four missing. Now, I don't have Wild Force, as you can probably see, I don't like Wild Force, and even I feel bad for people about this one. 
The only figure I would have bought was Red, to represent Forever Red, which was the often rumoured and never realised member of this team. At one point he was going to come with a bike I think, or a battalizer. Up until what they pulled in the last wave with Turbo Lightspeed and RPM, this was one of two teams throughout the Lightning Collection where we had team members but no Red Ranger. The reason this one is slightly more offensive than Time Force, I think, is that they even did a foot soldier villain for it. I'm just gonna say it, don't do villains until the team is complete. Otherwise, you get strange situations like this, where we've got a six ranger and a blue ranger, and some people probably got tricked into army building putrids for a team set that would never be finished. Horrendous. Oh, and we must say, people were put through the ringer by Wild Force Silver and the infinite number of variants that you could get of him. Just different boots, gloves, painting, stripes, mess. Blue looks alright, I've even got his, uh, I think, shark fin accessory by mistake because I ordered a kind of uh, mixed bag of accessories off AliExpress so that I could get a full length Quasar Saber. I'm guessing you know who for. Let's talk about the three member teams. Turbo. We've got three members but still four missing. This one's interesting in that there were actually four releases from it, though an argument could still be made that it was only three. The reason is all Phantom Ranger related. The standard release, the one that you would recognize most of all, was identified as being an in-space figure on the box, a season that is obviously more popular and was getting a ton of releases at the time. They corrected this for the translucent variant, now back to being identified as a turbo figure. So that's how we're technically one release more than Dino Fury, not that it gains you very much. The Blue Centurion was a deluxe release, so a bigger box and more expensive than a standard figure. The weirdness was that it didn't include the hallmark of standard deluxe ranges, a vehicle. Blue Centurion was just nicely painted with a few more tiny accessories in the back. There's no doubt this is the nicest version of that figure of all time, but it would have been great to get his cycle included. So as Lucas's bike is a little superfluous and Blue Centurion never got his, I think we can redistribute this. Not perfect, but hey, not awful. Turbo Red became the last release from the team, another as part of the final wave of Lightning Collection figures. This was done as TJ, and included another civilian head for him, his third overall. But most people would probably think of this as a Tommy figure. It would have been cool to get two heads included with this release to acknowledge both of them having designation over that Ranger role. However, what we lacked in heads, we more than made up for in accessories. Turbo Red included his Auto Blaster, Turbo Blade, and the signature weapon, the Turbo Lightning Sword. All fully painted, all perfectly painted. Very interesting that the other two figures in the wave don't get their personal weapons, but Turbo Red did. I'm not complaining as I love that sword as part of the tiny Turbo Ram toy I had back in the day. It was just a surprise to get two swords and a blaster in there. I mean, well done Hasbro. Unfortunately, the what are they going to do about Justin's civilian head outside of Ranger form question would never be answered, as the other four members of the core team were never released. Our second three member team, Dino Fury. Three members, three missing. Another missed opportunity for this one. I remember at the time they revealed Zato on a live stream thinking, no, what are you doing? You haven't even finished Beast Morphers yet. They would go on to do the Yellow Ranger in that set, but still, it was getting obvious that Hasbro were never going to keep up with team releases at the show's pace, even though they could have done. It makes the logic of them stopping the line because there's no show in production seem extra ridiculous, don't you think? They'd created the male and female mold for Dino Fury, so it wouldn't have been too much effort for them to complete this team. Gold is probably one of the least different six ranger designs ever, so they could have reused the male mold for that. But we only got Zato, Ollie, and Izzy releases. It's a crying shame we only got half the team. The accessories were their swords, which were painted much more nicely than the basic figure versions. Zato's possibly got the best figure of the three because for Ollie they didn't paint the silver on his helmet, they just left it as grey plastic. And for Izzy, well a lot of people have had a lot of shattered neck joints with that one. Be careful out there folks. At least you can fill in the blanks with the basic figures but it just makes the differences in kind of stature even more noticeable. 
Like, why even sell us half the team as Lightning Collection versions if you weren't going to do all of them that way? That's kind of offensive to the actors, as well as the fans. And lastly, our four-member team, Beast Morphers. Four members, one missing. Probably the most surprising uncompleted team for me was Hasbro's 2019 and 2020 team from Beast Morphers. They really seemed like this was going to be done fast. As soon as Wave 2, we got two figures out of the four figure wave being given to Beast Morphers. Devon and Nate were released at the same time, Ravi followed in the very next wave, and Blaze, oddly, in Wave 4, was their season's villain, I guess. In the basic line, Blazer's figure didn't actually have very poseable legs, so it does kind of make sense that they gave him an upgrade, and obviously he was one of two villains to actually have an actor portray them. Then wave after wave of nothing, not a peep from the series. It wasn't until wave 13, three whole years later, that Zoe got added to the set. Her packaging was in the no plastic era and wouldn't match the rest anymore, but the fact that they came back to Zoe after so many waves did give me hope that we might finally finish this team's set. But although two or more regular waves of figures would follow, Steel would not come with them. As great as it is to have Blaze as a villain figure with a civilian head, I would hand it back in a heartbeat to have gotten the actual fifth and final Ranger from the series in Lightning Collection form. This was the first sign that Hasbro were just going to pivot on spec and never fulfil sets of things if the sales didn't support it. Yes, ruthless, yes, sensical as a business, but they had one of the smallest rosters of Ranger teams ever and still found a way to screw it up. This was their first season in charge. They should have honoured that. They did both of Steel's Beast Bot and Ranger forms in the regular line, so you can make do better than most of the incomplete teams here. But as with Dino Fury, there's enough degrees of differences between the sets that it's not an ideal alternative. The accessories were interesting, the main trio obviously had their wrist mounted morphers sculpted on, Nate had his striker morpher as an included accessory. Devon also got his cheetah beast blaster, seen in most of the episodes as a final Megazord attack move. He also got his beast X saber, which was the only weapon to come with both Ravi and Zoe. Ravi did get two lightning effects, one a custom punch one, and the other a custom pixelated slash effect for the sword. Zoe got a swirling effect for her saber. Zoe's probably my loosest figure of the lot. Nate got his striker saber. Blaze got a sword as well and a cool computer virus suitcase. The seatbelt style suspenders they wear were done as a separate piece rather than a molded on one like the basic figures got. The set, what there is of it, looks great and to my dying day I will not understand how Hasbro didn't just put the Silver Ranger figure out. They released a lot worse. They had the striker morpher accessory and sword. The suit wasn't that different to golds. They could have just included the beast bot robo head from the basic line. To be messed about so much with this team was beyond aggravating. This was Hasbro's first foray into Power Rangers. Wave 2 suggested it was going to be a priority team for them. Wave 5 onwards suggested that it wasn't going to be. As I said in my How Hasbro Dismantled Power Rangers video, they could have done a traditional four-figure final wave for the Lightning Collection and actually completed Beast Morphers and Dino Fury, both of Hasbro's main teams, but instead they opted to start three more. I know Turbo was technically already started, and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't not want Red Turbo because it's a Tommy Ranger, as, as well as the TJ1 it was released as. But yeah, imagine only having five incomplete teams rather than seven. Hasbro left more teams incomplete than Bandai did in the Legacy line, where there were three left unresolved. However, they also completed a great many more teams than Bandai. Bandai did five, including Metallic MMPR, whereas Hasbro did 14, including Remastered and Metallic MMPR, and most of the SPD and Dino Charge Rangers. So it's all a numbers game and it would have been great to have finished those teams rather than getting left with members who are fated to only represent their season. I would complete every single one of these teams given half the chance. Time Force could probably do with starting over though. Honestly, if I'm ever to sell up, these will be the first ones to go, because what's the point? As I enjoy doing, let's rank the civilian heads. I will say there's no freaks in here, Everyone is recognisable and I'm happy with all of them. But seeing them all together like this, 
it's easy to have obvious favourites. I'm not going to rank the two Wild Force figures, Merrick and Max, as I don't have them, and often these look better in person than the promo picks, so feel free to rank them within these in the comments. In 13th place, it's Nate. He looks kind of dead, like the whites of his eyes just isn't there properly. In 12th place, Zoe. Happy to put her beside Nate, I'm sure she is too. For such a recent figure, it just looks a bit off, a little generic, like a porcelain doll. In 11th place, Izzy. It looks too old, does not look like her. In 10th place, Ravi. Again, one of those earlier figures where it's good, but not great. In 9th place, Devon. Same wave as Nate. Looks kinda here, but not here. In 8th place, Lucas. Okay, mine does seem a bit misprinted, but I know who this is, at least. In 7th place, Wes. Maybe nostalgia put him here, but you've got to admit, it's better than the old style figure that Bandai did. In 6th place, Zato. Close one against Wes, but it's a bit more real, whereas Wes is a bit more marble statuesque. In 5th place, TJ. How different is this to the In Space release? Maybe it doesn't matter because this is still great. In fourth place, Blaze. They got the Colby likeness, but not the hair colour. But overall, it's one of the upper echelons. In third place, Ollie. Really seems like with Ollie, they were introducing more pinkish skin tones and it just makes them look more vibrant and real. In second place, Chad. Lightspeed Rescue, we hardly knew ye. Hasbro brought some serious charm to this one. And in first place, Summer. Compared to the paleness of Zoe, this is a breath of fresh air. Delightful. How annoying then that the figures, paint apps and heads got so good right as they pulled the plug on the line. I really believe they could have kept this thing going for years and more waves and we could have finished some of these teams off. Depending on how the Playmate stuff shakes out, maybe this is going to be the first step to one day hopefully getting Lightning Collection 2.0, we can only dream. There is a change.org petition which I'll include in the description if you're interested. Guys check out my Patreon where I've added unboxings for my final Lightning Collection figures from Wave 15 and now the Omega Rangers arrived in the UK 7 months after the US. I'm surprised it didn't get cancelled to be honest. But hey, I guess they locked us in at full price when you guys were paying half, so great. All jokes aside, yeah, those are some good releases. Colour me surprised. See, when they try, they can impress. So what do you think of our range of incomplete Lightning Collection teams? And which ones are you most annoyed or upset about? Let me know in the comments. Would you believe I have five more Lightning Collection figure videos to make? So do subscribe if you've not done so already and look out for them. Until the next time, see you later.